Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. The family that vacations together stays together. At least that was the plan. Except now the dastardly desk clerk is saying he can't confirm your connecting rooms. Uh, wait, what? That's right, ma'am. You have rooms 201 and 709. No, we cannot be five floors away from our kids. Eh, the doors have double locks. They'll be fine. When you want your connecting rooms confirmed before you arrive, it matters where you stay. Welcome to Hilton. I see your connecting rooms are already confirmed. Hilton for the stay. Welcome back to Rams Cup, your favorite LA Rams podcast. We are part of the Fans First Sports Network. You can follow us on our YouTube channel as well at LA Rams Up. I'm your host, Mark. I'll be joined occasionally by my football gurus, Paul and Ian. Let's get to it. Welcome back, Ram fans. Episode 513 of Rams Up. What do we have for you this episode? We're going to have some final words on the Ernest Jones trade. Well, is it really going to be the final word? Probably not, but we are going to move on to some other stuff, I promise. Do have to have some final comments on that, though. And we're going to introduce a couple of guys the Rams claimed off the waiver wire as shared on the YouTube channel yesterday. Those two players, Neville Gallimore, out of Oklahoma, drafted by the Cowboys, played four years there, then signed by the Dolphins and cut. And running back Cody Schrader, quite a story there, out of Missouri, undrafted, signed with the 49ers and waived. So we'll have our player focus segments coming up later in this episode. Of course, the downside of that is there are two players coming off the Rams roster, one, Connor McDermott, the tackle. We were surprised he made it. He was put on IR. So you immediately think they're going to replace him with an offensive lineman? Not so fast. They did not. Maybe that's an indication the Rams are feeling better about Rob Havenstein's ability to go. And the Rams also waived defensive tackle Corey Durden. Quite the bummer. This is one of the painful parts of the NFL schedule. Guys make that 53-man roster, celebrate, I suppose, and then a day later find out they are actually waived. Their team has found someone they prefer off the waiver wire. Corey Durden no longer a Ram and not part of their practice squad either. And speaking of that practice squad, who is on it? 16 players plus the international player David Ojilaga. Offensive linemen A.J. Curry and Justin Dedich, no surprise there. Both tight ends, Miller Forrestal and Nikola Kalenic, they played really well in the preseason. And if you've been paying attention, you know by now I really liked cornerback Cam Lampkin and safety Tanner Engel. They were both added to the practice squad, as was Sean Jolly. Defensive tackle Tule Letulekesanoa. Center Mike McAllister, he was pretty much a lock. Wide receiver Xavier Smith, surprised no one picked him up. And two undrafted free agent wide receivers, Sam Wigless. Remember, he got hurt. I think it was that first preseason game. Knocked him out for a bit. And Drake Stoops. Defensive back Jason Taylor, the Rams' seventh round pick last year, was added. As was Keir Thomas, the outside linebacker. And the two exemption practice squad players, running back Zach Evans and linebacker Zach Van Valkenburg. Any players I'm a bit surprised did make it? Well, I thought Cam McCutcheon had a shot, and J.J. Lopp had that game-winning reception. O'Shawn Mathis, one of the Rams' first cuts over the weekend, was not at it. Thought someone might pick him up as well. Wanted to get to some news and notes, some roster news from across the league that might be interesting to Ram fans. I'm going to lead off with an interesting move the Rams made on Wednesday. Not a player move. The Rams have moved on from assistant special teams coach Chili Davis. Not sure what that's about. Kind of odd timing. Some NFC West news. The Seahawks have traded away edge rusher Daryl Taylor. He goes over to the Bears. 
and they've also added edge rusher Travis Gibson from the Jags. So the new coach there making some changes. Other NFC West news, the Cardinals cut quarterback Desmond Ritter. The 49ers cut one of their third-round picks from last year, tight end Cameron Latou. I had talked about the Titans quarterback Malik Willis. He was the rage of the NFL draft a couple years ago. And like two days later, he gets traded to the Packers for a seventh-round pick. And the Browns, who signed kicker Lucas Haversick just a few days ago, have already cut him. And the Cardinals have cut the old Rams edge rusher. And the, Ram- and, the- and the Cardinals have also cut former Rams draft pick edge rusher Chris Garrett. Gerald Everett and Daniel Hardy both make the Bears initial 53, but they did cut quarterback Brett Ripien. We have some bad memories associated with him, don't we? Ben Skowronik cut by the Titans, Austin Trammell cut by the Jags, and Trent Williams continues his holdout with the 49ers, and that is very significant. How did I do on my roster predictions? Well, my final 53 that I predicted, I missed on five guys, Boston Scott, Carlos Watkins, Xavier Smith, O'Shawn Mathis, and Sean Jolly. I thought they would all make it and the guys that did make it that I did not project onto this 53. Deshaun Johnson, I should have known better. Brennan Jackson, didn't know he was going to be ready to go. I th- saw him going on IR potentially. Connor McDermott, I thought A.J. Curry would beat him out. And then Josh Wallace, the undrafted free agent. Talked about him possibly making it, but I did not have him on the 53. Had Sean Jolly on there. And then inside linebackers, Jake Hummel and Elias Neal. Part of that is due to the fact that Ernest Jones was traded, but still didn't think they were going to carry five inside linebackers. (laughs) That never even crossed my mind. And my last list of roster locks. Remember, I said I got 41 guys. I was up to 41. I was going to bet my left pinky all these guys were going to make it. Two of them did not. One of them was Ernest Jones, and he was traded, so you can't ding me for that. The other one, Boston Scott, so yeah, there goes my left pinky. Maybe I'll share that on a YouTube video in the next few days. I really thought he was a lock. I think most of us did. Back in a second with some closing thoughts on the Ernest Jones era, and then we'll have our player focus segments on our two newest Rams. The family that vacations together stays together. At least that was the plan. Except now the dastardly desk clerk is saying he can't confirm your connecting rooms. Uh, Wait, what? That's right, ma'am. You have rooms 201 and 709. No, we cannot be five floors away from our kids. Eh, the doors have double locks. They'll be fine. When you want your connecting rooms confirmed before you arrive, it matters where you stay. Welcome to Hilton. I see your connecting rooms are already confirmed. Hilton, for the stay. Another word on this Ernest Jones trade. And before I get started, I have to say, I haven't seen the Ramley spun up like this in a long, long time on Twitter and elsewhere. Man, a lot of opinions. Well, really, maybe just two opinions. And people are really chomping at each other. Nice to see the passion. Andrew Whitworth and Jim Everett coming to the defense of the organization. A lot of fans and content creators voicing their opinions. Kind of good to see. A little troubling at times, though. It is what it is. That's social media for you. But all in all, we just got to move on, get past it, right? Now, Sean McVay did a pretty good job of explaining it as best he could without trampling on Ernest Jones' reputation is the way I would put it. Jones not fully invested during OTAs, perhaps, and McVeigh saying, hey, you know what? You got to earn it every year. If you read between the lines, maybe Ernest Jones just wasn't giving 100%, maybe thinking the job was his, falling back on that knee injury, perhaps. I'm just speculating here. McVeigh also saying that, you know, he wasn't getting the reps to fully evaluate him, and that presser People asking, well, wait a minute, you had plenty of time to assess him last year. 145 tackles, a defensive captain, how much more do you need to see? But McVeigh 
re-emphasizing, hey, it's a new year. What does that tell the younger players on this roster, his teammates, if he's just handed the job? But I also had an issue with McVeigh getting a little snippety. I believe it was Adam Grossbart of the Orange County Register asking a fair question. Is it really improving your team? Is it just a short-term thing or a long-term? And McVeigh obviously didn't like the question, was very dismissive of Grossbard. And to be honest with you, I didn't care for that. A lot of the Rams beat writers don't ask extremely tough questions. Kind of softball questions, in my opinion. Grossbard asked a fair question, and McVeigh did not like it. It was not a good look for Sean McVeigh, in my opinion. But on the other hand... As my special assistant who knows everything but prefers to remain anonymous, this is a really stressful time, a really stressful day for someone like Sean McVay, having to give the bad news to about 40 guys, 40 players, their hopes being dashed of landing on this roster. So you got to cut McVay a little bit of slack, but disappointing in that Hey, I know a lot of people love our Ram beat reporters, our so-called insiders. I think they could do a better job. As I mentioned the other day, some of the information we learn on game day, we should know beforehand. And I'm not talking about giving away team secrets. It's not at that level. And Adam Grossbard asking a somewhat tough question, and it just irritated the heck out of Sean McVay. More on that Ernest Jones trade. According to Jones, he was shocked when he found out the Rams had traded him. His position was, you know what, my knee's fine. Rams don't want to talk contract. I'll play out the year. Test free agency. I'm good to go. And he was running with that idea, with that plan. Got off the plane after returning from Houston, and the Rams informed him, dude, we're going to make a trade. Says his knee is fine, so if that's the case... Texas just landed themselves a solid linebacker at minimal cost. And the Rams feel like they're not really losing anything. Maybe moving on from what they see as a little bit of a headache, perhaps. A guy that wasn't given 100% at all times. At least that's how I read it. So they decide to move on from Ernest Jones. Hey, hopefully you caught Ian and I, our roundtable the other night, Going over the Rams' initial 53-man roster, the focus on initial because, as we stated, Rams will likely be making some changes, eyeing any players on the waiver wire that could improve this roster, and that's pretty much what went down Wednesday. The first thing the Rams did was claim Neville Gallimore, a defensive tackle, waived by the Dolphins. 6'2", 315 pounds, originally out of Oklahoma, NFL.com had him pegged as a potential second round pick, saw him as a guy that has all the athletic characteristics, the traits to be a successful run stopper, but sometimes the productivity just isn't there. So he slips to the third round. Cowboys draft him two picks before the Rams drafted Terrell Lewis, by the way. So he spends four years with the Cowboys across 52 games. He had, what, 90 Combined tackles, nine quarterback hits, four sacks, three passes defended, moves on to the Dolphins, and they surprisingly wave him. So this is a position, the interior defensive line, where I thought the Rams were a little thin at. You know, you got Bobby Brown as a starter. Corey Durden will probably be backing him up. They got Tyler Davis as well. He could be rotating in, getting a lot of snaps. And, you know, hopefully when Laurel Murchison comes back, he'll be at it. But this is a a group where this is a a spot where the Rams were a little bit vulnerable, uh, defending the run especially. So it kind of makes sense. Bring in this guy with some NFL experience, uh, can rotate him in and help the the depth along the defensive line there. And uh, makes, makes perfect sense. We'll see if it works out for the Rams. Neville Gallimore, our newest Ram. The second thing they did was sign Cody Schrader, an undrafted rookie free agent running back out of Missouri. The 49ers waived him. And this is a guy that has been underestimated his entire career. 
keeps on overcoming obstacles to become an impact player wherever he is. He spent a few years at Truman, then walked on at Missouri. Six-year college career then, right? And 25 years old. He's 5'8", 202, so he fits that Ram running back profile to a T. And man, this is a guy that over and over, people look at him and say, hey, why is Navy, Why is he even on this team? And then you hand him the ball and you find out why. He's not fast. He's a one-cut guy. He just produces. With Missouri last year in the SEC, 1,627 yards rushing and 14 touchdowns. Also caught 22 passes for 191 yards. Played for the 49ers a little bit in the preseason. Uh, but, man, they got a pretty deep running back room, so he was cut. Rams pounced on him. And this is a group we were surprised the Rams only carried three running backs. And now they have four, assuming, you know, I don't think they're going to cut Ronnie Rivers, right? So we're going to roll with four wide receivers. And maybe Cody Schrader becomes a punt returner, kick returner at some point. So the Rams add two guys the defensive tackle, and the running back. And these are both really good ads, I think. And Schrader, by the way, yet another team captain. Yeah, you heard it. It's it's a broken record with the guys the Rams bring on, uh, high-character guys that are team leaders, and Schrader fits that bill as well. So we got a few things coming at you later this week. We're going to have another Ram fan rap session, another Ram fan from back east. And we're also going to take a closer look at this roster. Where are the strengths? Where are their weaknesses? That type of thing. And maybe, just maybe, there will be additional changes to that 53-man roster that we can come back and talk about. That's going to do it for this episode Remember, you can reach us at ramsuppodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Our handle is at laramsup.com. Till next time, keep the horns up, stay safe, and have fun out there.